12.04 in the afternoon here on 90.3 FM. It's Wednesday, and it was, as we always like to say on Wednesday, it's Joe Steckler Day. And here he is, the host of Helping Seniors of Brevard, Joe Steckler. Hi, Joe. Hi, John, uh, and uh, welcome to all our listeners. And this is Helping Seniors, a radio show designed to inform, educate, and connect seniors to the resources that are needed. And let me tell you, you know, I've been on this radio show roughly 20 years now. And uh, as I've gotten older, I've become to uh, appreciate what it means to get older and experience the problems that uh, the roughly 165,000 people in Rivard County that are 65 and older could experience. In fact, while I was as- answering the phones at the um, for helping seniors for a number of months, I came across a lot of people younger than 65 that were experiencing the problems that I have now myself. So generally speaking, the things that I talk about on this radio show, with uh, very few exceptions, I seem to have experienced these things in my life. And um, I've talked so many times about pain management that... Um, I feel like I'm almost an expert in it based on the problems that I've had. And over the last four or five weeks, I, I, I haven't been here for a couple of broadcasts. And frankly, the reason I couldn't come for those broadcasts is because I simply could not get in my car and drive because the pain in my hip from a set of pinched nerves going through the spine was more than I could tolerate. So all of you that that have similar problems, that have trouble seeing a doctor, have trouble getting at pain management clinics, I sympathize with you. And those of you that are having these type problems, I wish you would call Kim Bernard, our new education specialist at Helping Seniors at 473-7770. And tell her about your problems, because I think one of the things that seniors need to do, if we're ever going to uh, make a difference in uh, Brevard County about getting help for seniors, is to have seniors themselves be willing to tell their story. It's simply not enough, and our commissioners don't seem to believe that uh, there is money that it should be in the budget to help seniors. Uh, seniors, I just wonder what ha- would happen to the general fund if roughly 300,000 seniors, maybe 200,000 taxpaying seniors, said, hey, I'm not going to contribute to the budget. I'm just going to take a year off. You guys fight it out. You build your roads. You take care of your other needs. You pay your bills. Pay your retirement. Pay your salaries. You know, that's a rough call, and a lot of people may not understand why I'm off on this vent this morning, but I just I want to be on a, a level playing field because that's what Helping Seniors has been about for the years that I've been associated with them, that we need to be able to put together a platform for seniors that is so so viable, so real, that the commissioners cannot ignore us. So having had my my, my vent my spleen this morning, I, I I would like to back off to a very calm level and welcome Debbie Fisher, who is uh, our primary guest this morning. And Debbie is uh, she's also one of our sponsors at uh, Helping Seniors. But Debbie is a uh, a relocation specialist uh it's actually it's a senior real estate specialist and we'll get debbie to talk about it but jennifer helen from seniors helping seniors is also on the show with us because this is the day that jennifer usually talks about helping seniors and i'm not turns talking in terms of the organization helping seniors but i'm ter- talking in terms of little lights and little Yes, helping seniors, meaning assisting them. And Jennifer thought it would be a really good idea to get Debbie on a radio show and to 
talk about seniors, the senior market, how seniors can maybe make a change, and when this change should be made, and is it ever too late to make a change? So with all that, Debbie, uh, welcome to the show, and welcome, Jennifer. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Joe. You're welcome. The second person was Debbie. She has a much lower voice than Jennifer, so it didn't come out real loud. So, Debbie, what is a relocation specialist? What do you do? Why, why, do, why are we talking about something like this? Well, what we do is we specialize in 55-plus uh, sellers and buyers, and we kind of are a one-stop shop for the real estate because what we find – Similar to what Joe just was speaking about is having, you know, maybe some transportation issues or some, you know, pain or can't get to different places. That's why we offer a free consultation. Come to your home because a lot of times we find when we go out to the home that it's not just about needing maybe to sell the home. You may need services such as seniors helping seniors to um, help with some transportation or things. Um, perfect example, yesterday I had a client and I brought them information on Shine because looking at their overall, what they had to work with to move into a 55 plus, I felt that maybe they weren't on the best medical plan to make their stretch their money as far as they could. So that's why it's important, I feel, to work with a senior real estate specialist because it's an additional training that we go through. And it's actually, there's only less than 2% of all the realtors, according to the National Association of Realtors in the United States, that have taken this additional training. And so it really, we become the eyes and ears when we uh, meet with our clients to ask the right questions, to maybe discover other services that they may not even be aware of that are out there that we can educate them on. So we're definitely an educational um, service for what you were talking yeah. about earlier, Joe. Yeah, I want to make two, two really, really, really important points in what Debbie was just talking about. Uh, uh, first, um, she talked about the, 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 the very, very small number of uh, real estate agents that do the type of thing that she does, and that's true, and that compares with almost every service that you want to talk about addressing seniors. And for instance, one of those is um, geriatric doctor care. Geriatric doctors, I, I used to have the exact number, but they, they are probably less than 2% of the medical population. And why is that? Well, here's the answer for that is because they don't get paid as much. They don't make the same amount of money if they're strictly uh, treating older people as they would if they had a practice where they could go out and and tap into private insurance or tap into the market that uh, that uh, uh, would pay them higher and uh, if you if you doubt what i'm saying when you go to the doctor yourself when you go to the eye clinics take a look around and see who are the majority of the people sitting there? They're senior citizens. Because that's, as we're, when you're younger, you don't need as much eye care, medical care. You need some, and there are, there are reasons. But I think it would be very hard for a doctor to exist if he had it just to depend on a market that uh, was treating well people. It would be very, very difficult. And the other thing was, Debbie mentioned an acronym, and uh, his acronym is for SHINE. And SHINE is serving the health, in, the, uh, health interest of elder. Serving health insurance needs of elders. Of elders. And that's really important. And it's, that's, why we have, that's why we have Debbie on the show. She, she's so smart. And she, 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 she recognizes when I make my mistakes, and she can come right in there real quick and fix, fix it. Right? She's laughing. Are you laughing? I can't see through Debbie's head. Yes. Uh, yeah. You know. Okay. All right. Um, <laughs> you know, you still have to have a sense of levity in your life, and that's something I've learned, uh, Jennifer, especially at our board meetings and in working with you over the years. That uh, 
we can joke about things and even in your care of people, uh, do you find that the seniors, the homes you're going to, the people still have, a, still have a sense of humor? They have a sense of humor, but at the same time, they have a lot of anxiety um, because they've come to a realization that um, it's time to move, um, downsize, maybe into an assisted living where maybe they're needing more help. And many of them have never been into a, an assisted living to visit. Or if they have, it's been maybe 20, 30 years ago. Well, assisted livings of today are very different than they were years ago. And I always recommend um, my clients to go visit them and have lunch. You know, go to the different places and have lunch. And they say, well, how do I know which one would be best for me? How do you feel when you walk in the place? Do you feel overwhelmed? Do you feel comfortable? You have to look at your own personality. Are you someone that like to be very outgoing and be with a bunch of people so maybe a larger community would be better for you or are you more someone that prefers to just have a couple of people and stay home and you want a more quiet environment well people don't realize there's 130 licensed assisted livings just in Bavard and most of them are smaller um, home type like six six bed homes where you have your own room but it's more of a house versus a big community. So you really have to look at what what fits your needs and what fits your personality because it's your next chapter. But it, you, a lot of times I find they start out where they're depressed, but then they realize how they've really quit living for a number of years in their home because they can't get out as much as they used to be able to get out or they've lost contact with their friends or they can't get around as much. And I visit many of my clients that have moved into different 55-plus uh, communities in the area, and they're alive again. They're alive, they're awake, they have new friends, they're excited. You just see it in their eyes and you see it on their face. And that's what I think sometimes is lost because they stay at home too long where they could go out and meet new friends again and start living again versus just sometimes I see, unfortunately, just existing. You know, all the years I've been doing the radio show, we've talked about... Uh, assisted livings and places and uh, nursing home places and we're talking about uh, services that can, can people in their homes but we haven't talked very often about people that are older making a decision and moving into I when what do you call the communities that that aren't that aren't medical type they're type more like people that you would help people move into? Well, I help move people into all types. It could be an assisted living, but there's also independent living. There's other um, people that maybe need um, lower housing costs, like, such as like Trinity Towers or Crane Creek. But unfortunately, here in Bavard County, we have a very we have a shortage of affordable housing for our seniors. So that's a whole, that could be a whole nother show in itself. Well, you're right. It's not a sh shortage. It's not a word. A better word is absence. That, that's very absence. true. Absence, yeah. But what I, was, what I was talking about was uh, you made a comment about somebody that's over 55 making a decision to sell a home they're in and move into another home. Mm -hmm. And that's not talking about assisted living or anything like that. We're talking about moving into another community that would cater to seniors. Is that, isn't that what you do? More of? I would say it's probably split about 50-50. I, um, I do move a lot of uh, clients that move into the actual 55 plus or maybe a, a memory care. But then places that, um, like Palm Bay Colony, for example, is a 55 plus community. So it's more for the active seniors. So I'm, I've moved people into condos, or maybe it's just time to downsize. So you have to look at what are your what are your current health needs, or where do you think you'll be in another five years? Do you feel that moving just to a smaller place where you don't maybe have the yard work and the upkeep is more what fits your current lifestyle, or do you feel that maybe you also have some additional health needs that you want to also consider? Because the worst thing I could do is advise someone to move, let's say, to a condo, realizing that their health isn't what it needs to be, and then say in two years they need to move again. So that's you have to really look at the whole picture when you're making those kind of moves. That's called being honest with what you're faced with. That's very true. I had yeah. that, I've had that very conversation yesterday where the daughter 
thought it would be good for the mom to leave her large home and move into an, a, a condo in the area. And I flat out told her, I said, you know, I would love, of course, to make the commission and move you into a condo. I said, but it's not in your best interest, so I don't believe we should do that. I said, when we look at your health needs and we look at the th problems you've told me you're having here at your home by yourself since your husband's passed, I said, you really need to go somewhere where it's assisted living, where the, the various health issues we discussed, now you'll have a solution to those problems because those problems would have still followed you to the condo. So that's where you need to be honest and really look at what, what's, the, what's the best for your client. Jennifer, uh, in, your, in your work with seniors helping seniors and listening to Debbie and me talk, um, what would some of your comments be about uh, looking for a place to live or at what point should a person make a decision to downsize or what, what specifically the area of work you do would, would tie in with what Debbie is talking about. So I've got several things that I'm thinking about as you're asking me that question. And, of course, you know my mom moved last week. My mom and dad moved Wednesday. I helped them move. And um, they didn't truly downsize. They actually went slightly bigger. But the new community, all of the landscaping the mowing things like that are are automatically taken care of it's a lively community with a clubhouse within a very short walking distance of their home because it's a 55 plus the house has grab bars it's got you know it's all one floor it's got grab bars it's got the higher toilet seats it's got a lot of things built in that they don't need right now but at 82 and 75 they are going to need at some point in the future they don't have to worry about it it's already there so for them that move was a great move um, in preparation of and they're much closer they were beachside before 30 minutes to the causeway now they're they're right in the middle of everything and it's just a short trip anywhere they want to go so that was a kind of a simple move uh, but it's definitely in their best interest in the long run for, for what their their needs will be in the future and you know right now they're still driving very healthy they're doing great but you know they're looking forward and saying this is this would be in in their best interest a lot of the clients that we have they've been in the same house 30 years 40 years they have really outgrown that space they don't need four bedrooms anymore. They, it's too much for them to take care of, and it becomes overwhelming. So often, you know, when we are in, and that's one of the things that we'll do is help organize or help clean out because they, they are, it, it becomes so overwhelming that they don't do anything. Well, you know, I, I think a lot of us, as we grow older, we collect so much stuff. And, um, yeah, I, I'm as guilty of that as anybody, but... I forbid my mom to ever go into another kitchen store ever in her life, <laughs> ever. <laughs> well, you know, we get older and we have a certain size house and we got so much stuff we've jammed into it. You just made a comment about your mother and dad moving into a slightly larger place. In some respects, as moving into a little larger place and giving a little more room might be better because it, it'd be easier for them to get around and move around, and if at the same time they'd gotten rid of some of the stuff that they had to move so much to clean and do things like that, it'll make it easier for them because they don't have to bend over as much. You don't have to worry about picking things up and moving things to vacuum or something like that. Unless they got you know somebody come in and clean the house, but uh, I'm certain that every woman that's listening to this show that has house clearance come in. I doubt that you tell you could tell me that you're completely satisfied with uh, with house cleaners because they don't dust the way you do. They you know you got you got got so many maybe knickknacks and things in the house. And let's face it, uh, people can't come in uh, every two weeks or every week or something and dust and clean the way you do. No, but that's one of the common things that I think people need because how many how many. And let's face it, you know, especially with the older generation. Now, my dad does do floors. He's really good at them. 
But for the most part, a lot of times the cleaning fell to the woman. And if you've had breast cancer, you can't run a vacuum cleaner anymore. There's a lot of conditions as you get older that prevent you arthritis from doing the vacuum that you may have done you know, your whole life for 40 years, you've made the mattress, you know, the bed a certain way. You can't do that anymore. So house cleaning is one of those things that probably should be one of the first services that someone has. And that's one of the benefits of going into maybe an independent living. You're still independent, but someone's going to come and clean the house every week. So you don't have to do those big chores that you know, I'm going to pick on my mother-in-law here for a second. She would, you know, take half of her pain pills. She was really good about not taking her meds because she didn't want to become addicted, but she would take half a pain pill, clean the house, and then suffer for three days. Well, that doesn't make any sense. That's not a quality of life. I I understand everything you've just said, and I I completely agree with you because, uh, you know, uh, there are a lot of, you know, a lot of, as you get older, sometimes the, the guys in the marriage become the, uh, they they do the house cleaning where the wife can't. Or they, you know, they they have to do more of the cooking and they have to make make sure they can do that. But being able to take take some of the uh, some of the workload off of either partner in a marriage is something that you have to consider because you know you can be a penny wise and pound foolish. Uh, you're exactly right. Uh, I know. Uh, for, Years ago, I would try to help help my wife by by running the vacuum cleaner, but I can't do it now. I I, I just can't do it. And uh, um, the, the the way like, like in the case of, of older people that are that try to save that 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 they can afford to do the things that we're talking about when they when they decide they, they want to continue to try to be stubborn and do these things. You take a chance on injuring yourself, and in the long run, it'll end up costing you more in terms of being incapacitated and not being able to do what you need to do. But as what you're saying, Debbie, it can also make it maybe a um, try to make this move and too early. Well, and one of the things I actually wrote in this this month's um, Helping Seniors of Bavard article and I mentioned um, seniors helping seniors, is you can downsize while you're still being in your same home. And what that means is what Jennifer was just speaking about. They can come out and let's start in rooms you don't even go into anymore. And let's start looking at the closets and they can start deciding what things maybe you don't want anymore and get them donated. Maybe start getting your papers organized. Um, Look at some of those collectibles like you've um, talked about that you've collected through the years. And maybe, for, for example, look at your Hummel collection and Maybe there's one or two that really bring back a certain memory. Maybe keep those, but the rest it's time to find out maybe your you know adult children want them or you know find out you know if there's certain memorabilia in your house that your family wants and do that now. Don't wait till usually there's a crisis or you know someone's gotten sick. I mean, plan ahead where you can do it at a slower pace and you can have someone like uh, seniors helping seniors come out and help organize those things. I mean, that's a huge less stressful way than when I get phone calls that someone went to rehab and their goal was to go home with home health and that's not going to be the case. They need to go move somewhere now and so nothing's organized. The house isn't organized. Maybe the husband took care of all the paperwork and maybe he's the one now going that needs to move to assisted living and she doesn't know where anything's even kept. I mean, it's just you can be proactive in so many ways that can just help even if you're staying in your house for a while like she mentioned jennifer mentioned about putting grab bars up uh, making sure we don't have throw rugs in the house for safety the higher toilet all those little things that make a difference so you can stay in your house longer and that's one of the things you know although we are you know a real estate company i went in and had free consultations and you know after looking around they didn't need to move it was just a few things you know where maybe things need to get organized or some safety features need to put in but let's start that process, and I think that's why um, we provide why we provide the free consultation to everyone to really let's look at what what we're talking about. Well, are are you? Okay, we're just about to take a, a mid show break, but a question I want to ask Debbie now, and I want her to think about it during the break, and we'll answer, we'll talk about it when we come back. Um, 
David, I think a lot of us uh, may place an attachment to uh, possessions that we really like and we value that maybe the children don't have the same attachment. And Debbie is uh, nodding her head. So we're going to talk about that because that's one. Of the, it's uh, it's hard for us maybe to let something go, but it might be something that the children don't want and are reluctant to say that. And so maybe it's just better to let it go now. So with that thought, we're going to take our mid-show break. And it's resp- Debbie's responsibility to remember, because I might forget, so... Uh, well, we're going to take our mid-show break, and we'll come back after the half break. Stay with us, please. It's 1235 in the afternoon here on 90.3 FM. It's Helping Seniors of Brevard with Joe Steckler. Heard every Wednesday from 12 noon to 1 o'clock. And right now, here is your host again, Joe Steckler. Thank you, John. And uh, welcome back to the second half of our show, folks. Helping Seniors is designed to... Inform, educate, and then connect seniors and those that care for seniors with the resources that they need in Broad County. And I do want to remind everybody that we have a lot of wonderful, wonderful resources in Broad County that do help seniors. And the two panelists I have on the show with me this morning, Jennifer, uh, Jennifer Helen from uh, Seniors Helping Seniors, and uh, uh, I'll give her a chance just during the show to to talk about her organization just a little bit because it, it helps seniors and you need to know about some of the elements of care that you can you can uh, uh, access in order to do some of the things that uh, that Debbie is talking about later on in your life. And then the other one, of course, is Debbie from uh, uh, our Relocate Realty Group, and uh, she is one of our sponsors also. But now is the time for the big test. What were you going to talk about, Debbie? I remember. You remember? Okay, go. Well, we're going to talk about sometimes you may need to have the conversation with your children as far as some of the things you think in your home that you think they may want. Say a, say the curio cabinet with the, the dishes that have been passed down through the generation or the dining room hutch, or that's another popular one that seniors have they feel that their adult children may want, and the adult children don't want that anymore. Not that it may not be the case in every case, but they they just need to have those conversations and don't let your feelings get hurt. It's not has nothing to do with you or you know how you feel about them. It's just a different generation, and different generations collect different things or have a certain taste in their home or different styles in their home. So it's it's good to find out those things now, with different things you've collected in your house or different types of furniture, or maybe there's a piece that has been passed down through generation and someone in the family you know, is interested in having that. It's, it's good to find out those things now and kind of have a plan for that rather than wait until there's a crisis or a situation where you're trying to make decisions when... You're not your thought process isn't as clear because you're under additional stress because maybe something has happened. My wife and I asked our our children and grandchildren when they visited us to uh, walk around the house and list the uh, the ten items that they like the most. List everything they liked, but the the top ten on their wish list because we felt that if, if we knew what all of them wanted. That, that we could do a better job of maybe making out a codicil to our will or something like that and say that uh, this goes to so-and-so, this goes to that one, this goes to the other, and uh, try to, because a lot of things or some things might be more valuable than others, and you think in terms of how much money you want to leave them, and you think in terms of uh, you know, what you would like to see really cared for in, in, in future years. Like I, I know my grandmother gave me my uh, uh, my uh, grandfather's shaving mug. And uh, I that's one of the very, very few things I have of my grandfather's. And then I have, I have my great-grandfather's watch, and I, uh, I treasured that for many years. And uh, ended up giving it to one of, the, one of, my, one of our grandsons that... Uh, was very close to this person, so it, it's a it, it, it's a, it's a, it's a thing that each each person has to make uh, their own decision how they want to do it. But I think you need the best information, and that's what you do. You work with these estate salespeople, uh, Debbie. 
I do. I work with um, people that are on, it's called the National Association of Senior Move Managers, and anyone can go on their website and you can put in your zip code and it will list senior move managers in your area. And the reason I choose to work with a senior move manager um, is because they have taken additional ethic training, they have background screening, they're licensed, they're bonded, they're insured. And I can't say that for everyone that is doing downsizing and things in the area. And I just want to make sure that when you're having someone come in your home, that you're also making a safe decision as well as someone also that knows the craft of downsizing. Because it, it's a big undertaking to do a true downsizing and a true state sale. Okay. The reason I ask that question because uh, one of the things I really, my wife and I really like to do on uh, sometimes on Friday or Saturday was to go to these uh, these estate sales because uh, you know there are a lot of things there that uh, they, they got to get rid of them and so you can get an awful good bargain sometimes for some things that you really 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 like or could really use and they're like. Uh, we ended up going and started buying stuff for the grandchildren, thinking, I mean, I like all these things. And, of course, I'm a nut on Oriental rugs. And so it was, you know, we, we buy those things sometimes by, uh, well, we couldn't get them all in the car. And uh, <laughs> uh, we talked about some big ones, and we had to go get a truck to get them. But the grandchildren, every one of them were enthused about those Oriental rugs. And we found out then that, I, you know, they all like the ones that we had in our house. So that's going to be one of the, probably one of the biggest decisions we'll have to make is who's who's going to get what rugs. And uh, it made me kind of pleased because, uh, well, Terry and I, in the course of being in the service and moving, it was, it was to our advantage to have the Oriental rugs. We didn't have to worry about uh, putting new carpet in or tiling or anything like that. And we make, you make a lot of moves in the military. But it was also a lot of fun to go and see what you could find. But at the same time, you go and you look at people's heirlooms and stuff that, that they truly treasured. And a couple of times, we went to these sales and um, the people that owned the stuff were there. And that's that's really hard to buy something when uh, the, the real owner is there. And I had one occasion where there was something that I wanted, but I didn't really want to pay the price that they had on it. And the uh, estate person actually went over and got the person and told him who I was and what I wanted. And the person came over and said, here's the price I'll sell it to you for. Because they knew I wanted it, knew that I collected these things. And in the process, as they moved this, they saw two others that, that I happen to really like. And I ended up buying those two, too. And now we got a couple of the kids that want those already. And I'm not ready to give those up yet. So, you know. It's part of the living process. It's the same thing that Debbie is talking about, folks, and, and relocating. What, Debbie, do you think, and Jennifer, you can answer. I, I, I'd really like for your your thought on this, too. When we, we go into homes and, and we, we look at people, how do you make the decision on what you can say to certain people how to approach a problem of downsizing or doing something, or at the same time, if you see they might be really strongly opposed to something, and you know that's not in their best interest, how do you go about trying to get these people to see about doing the thing that would really be best for them? And you both know that there are a lot of things that people refuse to do that really would be in their best interest. Debbie? Um, I would say when I see that, it's because of fear. It's because of fear of the unknown. So they know maybe they can't get around their home the way they used to or they're not eating as well because they can't cook the way they used to. But it's the fear that keeps them in a home because even though they know they're not in the best situation, they know that surroundings. They know their surroundings and that's where they feel safest. And that's where I suggest going something as simple as, you know, some community events or going to lunch at some of these maybe 50, um, independent living or assisted living because it at least gives you an idea what's out there. 
You may not need to move right this second, but I think it's an education process because I think when people are staying in their home and sometimes longer than they need to, it's definitely because of fear and they don't know what else is out there. So they don't know what they're getting themselves into. And so they know at least if they stay where they are, it's not the best scenario, but they know the surroundings. Okay, I got another question. But Jennifer, what would you say? You know, typically when we run into that situation, I do have the luxury of a little bit more time because we're going in and we're helping in the home. And once we've gone out and done the assessment, we come back and talk to our senior providers. So they have the lay of the land going into this situation. And we are able to build up a little bit of a a, a relationship, some get a bond there. Um, and get a trust. So where the daughter could say, Mom, I think you need to move. And I could say, you know, it may be in your best interest to move. There's going to be some hesitancy there. But when someone is a little closer in age, like, like our employee, that's coming in and helping on a day to day basis, they'll start to open up and they'll start to listen and they'll start to learn from one another. And through that relationship, a lot of times we can then at least get to the point where, okay, well, I'll go to lunch there with you. Come on, we'll go together. And it will open the door a little bit. Um, and I've, we've found that that really helps. Debbie, in working with these people and trying to get, and say, encouraging them to go to an assisted living facility uh, and check it out, you mentioned lunches, and I've had so many people say that that, that the uh, assisted living facilities encourage them to come. And do they really encourage them to come at a, at a lunchtime and, and have lunch there, and then and then get a tour? But do most of them now uh, encourage people to come during a during a lunch period? What they would like is you to call and make an appointment rather than just stop in because that way oh, you need okay. to make sure. Oh, yeah, yeah I agree there. Yeah. Just wanted to clarify that so the audience doesn't think they can just walk in and have lunch. To make an appointment. And, yes, they do want you to come in and um, get a tour and ask questions, um, kind of get a sense of how you feel. Look around when you're in the um, – dining room look around see see how the faces look are they smiling are they happy are they engaged with each other you know and how does that compare to how you're currently living are you that are you that same engaged level with your friends as you see when you're going out for lunch well we 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 have it we have our offices and uh, and of course you have an office there too and edward is on at assisted living facility on uh, on beach side on uh, our on uh, South Patrick Drive, right off of uh, 192, um, O'Gala Boulevard, I mean. Uh, they a, a, a started something called the uh, a Senior Service, Senior Resource Center, and, and they have six organizations. Debbie's one, we're one. There's an attorney in there. There's um, um, a... a, a a, a, a service. What are the other ones? You remember, Debbie? There's um, a senior living placement service there. There's a guardian service, elder law attorney, myself, 55 plus real estate, helping seniors of Bavard. And there's also a um, home health company. Okay, then, that's what I was thinking of the home <clears throat> health company. And then they also have now open to the public, they have outpatient therapy. Right, right there, yeah, in the, in, the, in the building. But what it is, you know, it's all six of these things are truly services geared toward seniors uh, accessing services that will, will will really help them in the senior market, not just a whole bunch of ancillary services coming in and trying to sell their services to somebody. But it, but it it excited me to be over there because uh, you hear a lot of talk about assisted living facilities now all touting how good their chef is, and uh, I want to tell you I I was so impressed at the uh, at the Zahn open house mm-hmm. and then the follow on one they did for the for our resource center that uh, everything that they served for that open house was prepared in their own kitchen by their chef. 
And I'm going to tell you, I've been to some, some fancy places throughout the world and uh, I've seen a lot of buffets and things put on. But what they did over there at Zons and the way that staff reacted towards a whole host of people that came in grabbing food and, and, and everything else, the way they did it was was just fantastic. But uh, the food preparation, I think, actually out exceeded what most of the restaurants in Bergen County were, were capable of doing. And uh, Debbie and I are both a little concerned about that, actually, because we're we're spending some time over there at the resource center, and we can get lunch. So. Um, we're going to have to watch ourselves because the food well, is really, that, that, really good. I have to add extra walking <laughs> yeah, under yeah. my week now. Well, yes. that's, that's the point I wanted to bring up because uh, one of the things is that I, all these assistant living facilities are touting their their food uh, uh, capability and to try to please. Heavens to Betsy, uh, for those of us that it might be, uh, you know, have a tendency to gain weight pretty quickly when you, when you start eating all these delicious desserts and everything else, and I don't care who you, you are. When they f- fix things that are so good, you have a tendency to try everything. Well, and they also have a mind diet, which is a great option for those of us who are trying very hard to um, eat healthy. And it is a it is the mind diet. I don't know if you've heard of it, but it is a scientifically based diet to promote uh, memory, health, um, and and they always have those mind diet choices. And they're just as fabulous sounding yeah, as you're everything not else. Convince me of that kind oh, of they're stuff delicious. is as good as oh, is there some, cookies and everything. Well. Oh. I don't know about in the moderation. Now. <laughs> well, the Mind Diet, they had a chocolate, a dark chocolate raspberry cupcake that was on the Mind Diet menu that I really wanted to try, but I behaved myself. It looked really good. You notice there's complete silence mm-hmm. on the line right now because I'm trying to regroup and how to, how, to, how, to, how, to, how, to, how to approach my answer to that, what the ladies are talking about because, uh, you know, one of the things that I, you know, I could tell you stories, and I get my stories. We wouldn't even have a show, but uh, I used to eat lunch on a submarine every Friday for. Uh, it used to cost us fifty cents, and uh, we started off with a half of a pineapple cut in half with a salad in there, and then we had a homemade Caesar salad, and then we had uh, 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 shrimp that you peel yourself. And then we had a choice of these huge Australian lobsters or a, or a one-pound, one-thick-inch porterhouse steak. And we always, always had uh, uh, lemon meringue pie for dessert. And that was 50 cents on a submarine. And uh, I think they, maybe they did that to encourage people to come on the submarine. And uh, I served on six, granted two of them, and I... I, uh, and we always had good food on submarines, and that's why I think a lot of people like to come aboard submarines because we got extra an extra allowance for food to get our people to come on board submarines. So there was always enticement to do a lot of things, and that's the same thing that they do in a nurse in a nurse home or skill. It's just a little silly. They try to make it luxurious and as nice as it possibly can be to help you enjoy the fact that you can't. Do what you used to do. Yeah, I've always called it. It's a cruise ship that goes nowhere. You know, that's a that's a that's a, that's a probably a very very good way to say it, Debbie. You can be know. as active and come out of your cabin as you want with everything, or you can stay in your cabin and just hang out by yourself. But uh, to me, it's a cruise ship that doesn't go anywhere. Our uh, our board <laughs> operator John Harper, his his brother is over at uh, as at Zahn and. Uh, John, what would you? Uh, you don't get a lot of time, but you get you can say something about Zon if you want to. Yeah, it's not uh, very often I have a chance to say anything on this show. I I have a chance now. Yeah. Seriously, um, uh, Zon has been a great facility. Uh, you're talking about uh, food. Uh, the food there is wonderful. Um, I've often said it's like being on a cruise ship. It uh, the place is immaculate. The new addition is uh, incredible. They've got a great movie theater there. They've got a uh, a uh, religious uh, 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 I'm going to say uh, chapel uh, because it serves all denominations and uh, 
Uh, it's just a great facility, and they always have uh, some type of activity that's taking place, and it's good. But more important, and even in all that stuff, I just imagine your brother is, I think Byrne is doing better there than he was in the other facilities he was in with the problems he had. Oh, absolutely. In fact, we have uh, talked about that recently, and uh, he's, uh, he's doing much better um, and uh, feeling, uh, feeling almost like his old self at times, uh, well, doing well. Yeah, that's what's important about when we talk about what our facility and talking about Jennifer services and, and and Debbie services. If all of these things that the these services provide and do can make the people that are participating in any level or at any any point, if it can make them feel better then we receive something of value. Jennifer? One thing I've noticed about Vern when we're there, um the and, and this is maybe a fine point, but I noticed it right away. When we're there, at, we're having board meetings. Vern will come in, and you can tell that is his home, and he's our host. He will make sure we have coffee. He gets the kitchen people to bring us cookies. He's so comfortable there. It's such a good fit. Such you know, To me, it seems like, okay, I, I, not Zahn is the host. This is my home. I'm the host, and I'm going to sh- make sure that we take care of you. Where I don't know... Maybe before that he had that, I don't know if you call that buy-in or, but, you know, and I love that because obviously that is a very comfortable place for him to be. And and when somebody goes into an assisted living, for them to have that comfort level to say, this is my home and come here, these are my guests and, and we're all going to take care of them. I thought that spoke volumes. Well, it does. And we love the cookies and coffee, too. <laughs> oh, we absolutely yeah. do. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, we, we could joke, and we do that on the show because uh, the show is about developing a capability to live. And there's just so many things that, if we know about all these assets that are available in our own communities, that can help us with something we can afford, uh, then it's to all of our advantages. Jennifer, here we go. The one minute or last to say something a little bit about senior self seniors, and I want Debbie to close with talking a little bit about uh, uh, exactly what she does and how, how people. I mean, you got 30 seconds, maybe. Go ahead. Okay. So seniors helping seniors, we really do hire seniors. I'm now officially can, can do it 50 and over um, to go out and we help seniors stay at home. That's our goal is to keep people at home. We do transportation, light housekeeping, meal preparation, uh, companionship. Uh, we've walked dogs, taken care of litter boxes and, and parrots. So our goal is always to keep people at home. Um, but sometimes that's not always possible. So we love to partner with people like Debbie because we want to make sure that if we're referring someone that we know that they're going to a really safe place. And I know, you know, when Debbie said okay, who she number. deals with. What's your phone number? 321-722-2999. She passed. Debbie? Brevard Relocate Realty Group, we truly are a 55-plus um, specializing with buyers and sellers. Of course, we help everyone, but that's truly our specialty. And we are a one-stop shop, so that's why we have our free consultation, because if you need um, sorting and packing, you need an estate sale, you need the mover coordinated, you need other services, we can help with all those things. You don't have to go to 10 different places. We can help coordinate. And like Jennifer said, it's we're making sure that we're partnering with other senior friendly people to help our number 321-298-5562 give us a call and i I will close how much time i got john about 10 seconds okay the brevard senior but the uh, zon senior resource center is something that's geared to do exactly what we've been doing at helping seniors for a long time it's promoting the needs of seniors and a way to care for seniors. So uh, look forward to uh, the ground, uh, like a ground force for uh, making an attack on doing a better job of helping seniors. I got the mind of a signal. See you next week. Bye-bye. And you've been listening to Helping Seniors of Brevard, heard every Wednesday, 12 noon to 1 o'clock on WEJF 90.3 FM in Palm Bay. It's 1 o'clock.